Hello everyone and hope you're doing fantastic today. So today we're gonna look into a little bit into Bgraphy, which is a platform where you can create the stuff that you normally want to create in Grasshopper. And you have a very, very similar way of looking at it in this one, right? So that's super exciting, right? Okay, so to get started with it, I just want to give you a basic overview of how we can actually create something in this thing and how it really has a similar design aesthetic just like in Grasshopper. So first of all, if you go to bgraphy.com, you, you are signing up onto an account and this gives you several positive things because it is an online platform you're able to exchange with some other people. So you're able to collaborate with stuff together and you're also able to export it to a bit more easier than uh, how it's done in Grasshopper. So once you log in, you basically have the editor up here and there you can create your own new models, just like in Grasshopper, right? And not only there uh, exist models there, but there also exists stuff for the market as well. Like you can basically create your scripts and then you can get them out there. You either get them out there for free or you have people to pay for them a little bit. You know, if you have very complex scripts, some people might want to use uh, your script. So you can actually also make money with it, which is great, right? And yeah, by the way, uh, it's still in beta. So just so you know that. So, Let's get started with an example. So if you go on um, the main website and then we go to editor and then we're going to just create a new model. Let's call it a circle, right? And now here we are just going to create a very simple model uh, and how we also, um, I will make a comparison also with this and with Grasshopper. So down here, you basically have your little 3D way of looking at it. So the things that we're going to put here will be also displayed there. And but we want to create because I want to take a parallel here to Grasshopper and Rhino. We want to create this very simple, just a simple plane. Then we're going to create a circle and the circle is going to be extruded and then it will be capped like the thing would be put on top. And we're going to do the same thing here, right? OK, let's start first of all with the circle. So what you can do um, here with right click, you move around. And with double click, you can actually get into the command prompt. So if you don't know exactly, okay, it's me under here under tools, under list, under map, you know, those kind of things, you can just double click here and see if the thing pops up that you have in your mind. So that's pretty useful. But and if you want to in, be inspired, you just basically look at the tools up here and then you get the inspiration from that. So what are we going to do is we want to create a circle, right? And now it, you see it zooms in on the circle and it gives us several different things that we can put in. First of all, the origin and then also the radius. Great, origin. So what do I need for this, right? Um, I can basically uh, double click again and then create a plane, an XY plane, right? So it's like a plane that like sits very, very snugly here, right? I put this plane as the origin. Just to compare with Rhino, right? I have here the plane, I have the circle as origin. Then I need a number parameter, which I want to put in there as well, right? So how do I do this? Well, double click, I can click para parameter. So there we have, for example, text inputs um, and you know various kind of string inputs as well. But I want to have something a little bit different. So I will head up here to input, and then I'm going to range input. And here, as you see, it's a bit more smooth, right? Like we have a uh, um, a, a little dropout down menu like here, where you, you can define the min max a bit more clearly compared to Grasshopper, right? We kind of have to click on it and do it here, like up and down. But here we have it set up in this very neat little uh, nice window. We put this in our radius and voila, we see we can adapt the radius to our needs. Then what's next, right? We want to create an extrusion of the curve that goes into the Z direction. So if I put this in here, you already see, okay, cool, nice. There's something happening, right? Amazing. But um, I also want to use a vector, basically vector Z, um, which will be the same in the end. But then I also want to create another range. So I can either Control C, Control V this, 
or I can obviously put another input here like this, right? But for now, we're going to use this. And as you see, it adapts to it very clearly. Now, the cool thing now, like right at the moment, we kind of see like a mesh preview of our thing that we're creating here. But you can also have it look a bit more nicer on um, this preview up here. So it's kind of the, um, the viewer mode. So it's editing mode and the viewer mode. It will open into a separate window and then it gives you the viewing of the people. And you see, okay, hmm, okay, our cylinder is a bit, uh, you know, uh, there's something missing on top. But you see, I have the two parameters that, that I put in there, right? Which is pretty cool. But now I want to rename those parameters first of all, right? So let's let's re rename this as this as the radius of the um, of ours of our cylinder, and the other one would be our height. Height cylinder. And we also want to cap it. So basically, we want to put a little lid on the top. And now, if I put this on here now, we see we have the same thing in the thing here. And we also have the adjusted, uh, the adjusted naming of those parameters as well. So they kind of um, correspond to those things really, really well. And also in Rhino, you can obviously, you, there are all those cool things. You can group stuff, you know, you can name the group into things. That's very nice and neat. You can rename the groups. You can give it colors, you know, all this little, little neat stuff. And just play with that as well. And then you also have a very good feature about um, the export. So basically, if we have our, um, the, the core function here, we have the export button which gives us like very typical um, formats like OBF, uh, OBJ, which is um, like just a standard for objects. DXF is very normal for AutoCAD. SCL is for printing. Um, and step, I think it's also like this for printing, right? EGS, I'm not sure. But those are very like common ways of exporting your things. So then I could, would be able to put this here as well. And while right now, for example, in Rhino, we would obviously have the same, same result. But if you want to export, you have to download some plugins and this kind of stuff, or we have to like bake it, you know, like uh, how is it bake, you know, blah, 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 do like this, and then here, and then go in Rhino, file, save as, and then export, blah, blah, blah. But here, it's quite cool. Like, because I have the dog connected here now, I can go to the, I can go to the um, export settings here, and then I can basically um, download it, and I can give it some little, you know, uh, for example, I can have it a more more defined as the mesh and stuff like this, um, and have it as the OBJ. And then when we download, we basically are greeted with a very nice um, OBJ uh, OBJ uh, file, which then can directly be opened if my browser um, allows it. Yeah, and now here we have the same object, and it's just like a, this is just like a random. Um, a random uh, view of, uh, how do you say, uh, with like Windows, so it's maybe not the best thing, but it's basically like, like a, a ra random viewpoint. So we have the same, same things. And by the way, um, as far as I know, it does not know the X, Y position, so that's why it's on the side. Um, it's not, not a mistake of them, as far as I know, it's just a mistake of uh, the OBJ viewer of Windows. So yeah, so that's like the cool thing. So like with this, you basically have that, right? But what is cool about it, because I have this here right now, I can also go, um, if I go back to into the main menu, right? Um, I have my circle and the button, I can also like publish this, right? To then put it and be more precise and put it into like a thing and create something that can, can be paid for as well, right? But um, I can also share it with some other people and say, okay, you know, you can like create it, edit it or whatever, right? And then you also have like the, the team where you can ha have a new project set as a team project and then you can work with several people at the same time together. Kind of like a canvas kind of thing, but you work with the same file at the same way. So, um, yeah. There are, I will do um, a couple of more videos about this because it's a very interesting software to, to, to check out. And yeah, you should definitely just try it out. Like it is for free. You can just, just use it, right? And then um, uh, try to get familiar with the platform, right? 
it doesn't have as many as many tools uh, available as in Grasshopper at the moment, right? But there is a wide variety of things that you can do with it as of now. And they also have a very active Discord community. Um, you can get them on LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah, I think uh, they have a they have a LinkedIn profile. And if there's anything wrong, you can always like get active and like enjoy them. Uh, active and um, in in enjoy improving the product and um to get with them and like you know uh make this uh, you know, move forward which is like a very cool thing because they um are able to fix some of the problems that like obviously grasshopper has its problems right um because you, know, you have to buy buy rhino you have to buy grasshopper and all those kind of other don't have to buy grasshopper you have to buy rhino and all those kind of things can add up as like a um you know point of like, where do I get into this thing? So this is a very great way of just getting in there and having like a face-to-face -face kind of um, yeah, communication with your peers if you want to do it. Anyway, so that's about it. Um, and yeah, if any questions, let me know. Check out the stuff in Discord and see you in the next one.